Welcome back to a critical let's play of Super Mario 64. Last time I talked about the game's inciting dramatic incident and how the first floor and mezzanine areas of the castle are designed. This episode I'm going to be looking at the game's first proper level, bob on Battlefield. Now, I call bob on Battlefield a level, but the game describes it as a course. Now, this will be an important distinction to unpack later, but for now let's focus on the most pressing question from a design perspective. How does the player know to jump into the painting once they've found it? Well, recalling that while Toad explains the concept to the player directly, talking to Toad is not a mandatory activity. It then falls to the level design and physics of the room to suggest and guide the player. Placing the painting on the wall directly opposite the door you walk through upon entering the room immediately draws the player's attention to the large painting. So that's a good first start. Now, furthermore, the floor of this room features this raised platform with a small set of stairs guiding the player on a path of vertical motion. You can either run up the stairs or you can jump on top of it from one of the sides. This leads the player to the concept of vertical motion. Finally, and most vitally, once the player has ascended the stairs or jumped onto the platform, the bottom side of the painting's frame is close enough to Mario that he can brush up against it, causing it to ripple like a pool of water. Like so. All of these design elements coalesce into a strong, direct suggestion to the player. Why not try jumping into the painting? A huge part of what makes this experience effective is that it is so tactile. The idea of being able to jump inside of a painting is a classic trope, but Mario 64 emphasizes the liquid-like nature of the material he is entering. It also features, once you've actually jumped inside of the painting, a shimmering sound effect that accompanies the experience. It's so beautifully tuned to make it feel magical and delightful that given how frequently the player will be jumping into these magic paintings over the course of playing the game, crafting this specific experience to be aesthetically pleasing was a major success in defining and unifying the entire feeling and experience of playing the whole game. Entering the bob -omb Battlefield painting brings us to the Star Selection menu screen. This is just one of a handful of pieces of menu navigation that Mario 64 uses over the course of its playtime in the actual game. There's more to talk about in how this particular menu system is constructed and how it relates to the different courses that it bookends as we go on, but for now, I'll limit my general comments to the following. This menu system will end up being one of the most important pieces of design that structures the game, and referring back to it will be a, a vital piece of evidence when it comes to trying to examine one of the fundamental pervasive issues at work in Mario 64's level design. While it might not seem like that is the case given that it's just a menu, it will be that important. Here however, I'll just focus on the immediate details. A spinning blue star with a number above it and a title below suggesting us a vague hint of what exactly we're going to be doing. Now like the save file selection screen, there's no way to back out of this menu. The B and A buttons both confirm entrance into the level. Upon entering Bob on Battlefield, the player is presented with some mandatory tutorial text explaining where you are, where to go, and what to do. <clears throat> the exact location that Mario begins the level at is, in many ways, a reiteration of the entrance to the castle. We, the player, are presented with a situation in which a powerful, distant foe has claimed dominion over an otherwise peaceful land, and a handful of friendly survivors, the pink bob bombs here, are nearby to help us further understand what is at stake. Now, for the game as a whole, this set of design choices also functions as the beginning of a tutorial for a mechanic that the rest of the game will feature prominently, the ability to aim and fire Mario out of cannons. Now, while we, the player, cannot actually try out this activity on our own the first time, through bob on Battlefield, presenting a visual association between pink bob bombs and nearby friendly cannons is an elegant way of establishing this concept without overloading the player with information. Now, let's consider how the game indicates beyond the tutorial text exactly where to go. Again, we don't have to talk to the bop pink bob bombs in the same way that we don't ha ever have to talk to Toad. So given that, let's consider this. Mario enters the level facing in roughly the exact direction in which the player is intended to ultimately guide him, but not exactly towards the immediate path that will guide us to our goal. That path 
this brown dirt road over here is more than a few steps away from the initial area in which we are placed and in the direction in which we are facing. Now, these choices reinforce or the hint that we are given at the beginning of the level in the star selection menu, where we are supposed to be finding a mountain peak on which the big bob is lording over the course. Thus, the game is encouraging us to explore bob Battlefield by letting us figure out of our own accord how to get to where we're supposed to go. And in the next episode, I'll be finally examining the level and enemy design that we the player will encounter along the way to our encounter with the big bob -omb.